Um, okay, I can tell you this because uh, you're a writer. And 58 Keys, it's for writers who use Macs and iPhones and iPads. But there used to be this company, great firm, that would hire me quite often to work with writers, but also actors and musicians and journalists. I loved doing that. I miss that company so much. But because it wasn't solely for writers, and because there could be 25, 30 people at a time, not like this where it's just you and me, th there would always be a mixture of Mac and PC owners. So what I was required to do, every single thing I showed them, it was all about getting more out of their expensive computers, had to be something you could do on both Mac and PC, except this. I used to show them this anyway because it's irresistible. Fantastic out on the Mac, the iPhone and the iPad. This week, uh, the company that makes both that exceptional calendar app and, and actually the startlingly useful contacts app card hub, um, they've updated. There, there's a new version of card hub and there's a new pricing that means if you buy one, you get the other bundle subscription stuff. You must let me show you why they are so good that you will enjoy using a calendar and contacts app. There are alternatives to and I definitely don't think that these two are right for every writer and that's that is not just me trying to build in some suspense to keep you watch to, all right well maybe it is a bit okay fine. Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, as I say, which uh, forever will be for writers like you and me who use Macs and iPhones and iPads to subscribe because we have so much to cover. Usually, uh, I'd bet money. But since you've seen the title of the video, you already know if you're a bit interested in what we're going to talk about. And I don't think that the words calendar and contacts really sizzled at you, did they? They do with me a bit, mostly I think actually because of Fantastical and Card Hub. Though calendars have always been, uh, well, they're crucial to us, aren't they? We have deadlines and things. But I was once commissioned to separately review seven different calendar apps for iPhone, one after another, and that took the shine off. Fantastical came top in my eighth piece, the so which one of the seven did you buy, also known as, so why did we make you read seven? Let me start with Fantastical today then because of that. Let me actually let me start by showing you what I used to show those actors and musicians and journalists and writers. Let's say I have a friend called Susan and she's on the phone right now. Uh, we've just said the three of us, we're going to have lunch uh, two weeks from Tuesday. I mean, why not? There's a cost of coffee midway between. Well, me and Susan, let's see if you can fit it in there. But actually, we'll go exactly here. Um, I don't want to be late, uh, so let's have Fantastical check how long it's going to take me to get to there. And that's how long it will take by car, by bus, by walking, right now, this minute. Fantastical, though, will keep an eye on that and will change that travel time to match traffic conditions as we get nearer to two weeks on Tuesday. Uh, let's also say uh, there's something I've got to do before I meet you and Susan. So can I have an alert, please, two hours before I go? There you are. And that's two hours before I go not just two hours before the appointment, two hours before Fantastical tells me I have to leave here to get there on time. I realise actually I use it so much I kind of skipped thinking about this, but notice as I created a calendar event, I really just typed in what, well, actually what I might say to you, if for some reason you were doing it for me. Lunch with Susan, two weeks from Tuesday at Costa. Okay, got it. That's it. I didn't have to go to the date two Tuesdays from now. I didn't have to click to add a time. I didn't have to pick a time at all, in fact. And I didn't have to then search for locations. It just did it all for me, including figuring out that lunch is probably 12 to 1. Uh, it often isn't for me, so, but I could change that. It's fine. This is all called natural language passing. And uh, I believe Fantastical was the first to do it on iPhone, but now all calendars do. I think Fantastical is still the best at it actually, but even the calendar that came built into your Mac and free on your iPhone, it does this natural language passing to some extent. What I don't see it do or any of the other calendars I reviewed though is pass what you type as you type it. So notice as I type lunch with Susan here two weeks from Tuesday, it's filling in the details below as it goes. What that means to me is that I see 
it happen. I see when I've made a mistake. It's a visual representation of what I think I'm doing. And in other apps, it doesn't show me that and I have made mistakes. There's actually, there's so much to say about Fantastical and lots of things that actually I don't tend to use. Uh, the weather forecast, for example, it's, it's nice. There's also adding tasks, to-do tasks, and I have never once even looked at it in Fantastical because I don't believe tasks belong in a calendar. Okay, uh, yeah, I have to pay my credit card by a certain date. But it's a task I can do in a minute, any time up to and including that day. It isn't an hour I have to block out in my calendar. Nonetheless, all calendar apps, uh, the seven I reviewed, all of them, they do include reminders, so Fantastical does as well. Uh, tasks like that, to-do tasks, are a premium option. I should say there's a free version of Fantastical and then there's a subscription one, and you know how this works. Uh, the developer, Flexibits, uh, tells me that they believe their free one is better than most paid ones. Yeah, of course they do, they would. I can't tell you if they're right though, because I bought Fantastical years ago, years before the move to subscriptions, and having bought it, I got to keep some of the features that were then turned into premium subscription ones. That was not the smoothest of transitions, actually, but it's all done now. And what's left hanging is my tiny bit of uncertainty of what it is I can do that I've been able to keep without paying more for, and what you can do when you get it for free now. According to the website, though, tasks to do are one of the premium options, and more usefully for me, that travel time thing you saw, it's now premium to service the, the time to leave stuff. So all good, useful features. Plus is now this. In 2020, Fantastical won Apple's App of the Year. And the developer told me that it was specifically because of how this calendar app added new features to help people who were suddenly forced to be working from home. Let's say you and me, well, I'm in the UK. Let's say you're with me, we're in another lockdown and we can't meet Susan for lunch two weeks from Tuesday or whatever it was. But we can do a Zoom meeting with her tomorrow at 10 a.m. So, new event. Meeting with Susan Hare tomorrow at 10. And if I now click here to show more, I have an option to say that this is a Zoom meeting. Uh, you do have to set this up in advance. You have to link Fantastical to your Zoom account. But then when you do, when you have done, ticking that box sets up the meeting. I used to log into zoom.com, go to my account, add new meeting, create the link, save your unit, tick. Plus you can invite people to the meeting right from here, but I want to come back to that. Uh, for now, add event and we're done. Take a look in the meeting in the calendar for tomorrow. Uh, there it is, the meeting link all ready for me. I wanted to talk to you about Fantastical now, well, because I've been meaning to for quite a while actually, but also because this week, it's news this week as I'm recording it, um, May 2021. Fantastical hasn't changed. Everything it had before, it's got now. The premium part hasn't changed in the, it's the same price, but now you get something else. You get Cardhop. Cardhop is a contacts app and actually new this week, entirely new, is Cardhop 2 for Mac and iPhone and iPad. Easiest to show you why it's good. I have this couple of groups of contacts that I email from time to time, and what I used to do is, well, you've done this too, haven't you? You need to email them all, so you, you go into mail, you search for the last one that any of you send to me, yeah, you hit reply. Don't need to do that anymore, just a quick keystroke, select the group, wallop, it's done. Um, this, well, you could do that before, this in new in card up too, as well as that you can invite people directly from card up. If you are fantastical, invite, the name of the group, opens the calendar, creates a new event, invites all of the members. And yes, I can make that a Zoom meeting. More often, I, as, you know, as a writer, I want to email a single editor, single person, type email, start writing, and you've got them. Same with call, actually. On a Mac, I can place a FaceTime call to whoever. On an iPhone, I can just phone them. Then, uh, you know, there are times when one friend needs the details on another. So copy Susan Hare email, hit return, paste the detail into wherever you want, or copy her address, a personal address, a phone number, anything you've got. And when you haven't got anything, when you're adding in someone, you, you just open card up and you start typing. Since the name you're typing in is not in your contacts list already, card up spots that and begins passing it, just the way it did with lunch details and things. Notices this is a new contact, 
and starts typing, filling in the form as you type. And I keep saying type. Watch what happens when I paste instead. You know how you got a block of text like that at the end of email stuff. Well, actually, Apple's own contact app will take that, but Cartop is great at slotting everything into place, regardless of how much is there, what it is, or what the order is. Um, I'll tell you, on my Mac, I use Cartop possibly every day, certainly several times a week. On my iPhone, I tended to forget that it was there at all. But now that I've been more recently trying Cart Up too, I'm kind of back in love with it. And there are new features, but it's mostly because using it, getting used to using it, convinces you how, how good it is. Um, those new features, by the way, they're across iPhone, iOS, Mac, all of the things. You want somebody's website address. We'll start typing URL, will you get, before you've even got there, there it is. Twitter, will you, done. If you have dealings, if you work closely with a large corporation, corporation even, you can search all of their contacts in the same way. Uh, and this might be more useful for those large companies, but it's kind of handy for me. You can see the relationships between people if you put in that detail. So as an individual writer, um, I work with a huge number of people at times, and it can be quite handy to make a quick note that so-and-so's husband is Mr. So-and-so. Uh, if you're doing it with a business card up will actually conjure up an entire organization chart for you if you put the work in. I did hit some snags, actually. I wanted to list the fictitious Susan Hare as a friend of mine and accepted that. It will show me that relationship, but there was some bug, some problem proving that I exist. It's either a bug or something profoundly metaphysical, and I don't, let's not go there. Uh, more common. More commonly for us as writers to be given a business card of an editor or certainly what well, if you get one, you can scan it directly into card up and card up will do that thing of filling out all the contact details from it for you. And it will also even keep the original image you took in case, I don't know, you've handwritten a note on it or something. So card up has actual new features. What's the biggest change overall though is the pricing of the two. I've been meaning to talk to you about both Fantastical and Card Up for a while, I mean, I have mentioned them both before, I've recommended them both before, but I wanted to do a, a, something like this, a fuller dive into them. And now's the time, because as of this week, as, as I record this, these two apps are for the first time now being bundled together. You can still get Fantastical for free with the limited features, and you can still get Fantastical by all of the features by subscribing. Card Hop is now free too, with limitations, and you can subscribe to unlock the most useful features of that too. But if you subscribe to either Card Hop or Fantastico, you get the other included for the same price. That is going to turn existing Fantastico owners into Card Hop fans and vice versa. Because I think you can see pretty quickly that Fantastical is useful and why it would help you, but I, I, I believe it takes longer, it takes actually using Card Up for you to get to rely on it. And now this one change is going to mean that every Fantastical subscriber automatically has Card Up to try out, and I think that's a pretty good thing. At the same time, every car, everyone who signs up to subscribe to Card Up now automatically gets Fantastical, which I think is a fabulous thing especially because there's no price difference. There is a price for subscribing though, you have to subscribe. Uh, the developers Flexibits calls its new revised subscription service Flexibits Premium instead of Fantastical Premium, obvious reasons I suppose. It costs $5 or £4.50 per month or about $40 or £54 per year. That annual price, it works at something like, well it's more than a pound or more than a dollar less per month for buying annually. There is also a 14-day free trial. In fact, actually, if you looked carefully in the screenshots I've been showing, you may even have seen that I'm on a trial version right now, partly because of the beta test, but partly for trial reasons. I had Card Hop already, and I, I bought Fantastical years before the subscription started, so that's how I got to keep most of Fantastical's features without subscribing. In my case, and actually I, I know this is happening to other people who watch 58 Keys too, that fact of having bought it already and getting to keep the features prior to subscription, it did it made the whole decision about subscribe or not much harder. Far harder, I think, than when you're coming in fresh and decide what, what do you get, what don't you. 
I, I have worked through it a few times over the years. I've thought about it, and, I, and usually I felt that the extra features weren't worth it for me. But now, getting the updated card up, and in particular, getting the new way of creating Zoom meetings with a tick, which is just infinitely faster than I used to do that on the Zoom website. I think I'm sold. I'm definitely going to carry on using Fantastic and Harder, but what I recommend, well, what I'm going to do, what I recommend you do, is work through the whole trial period, see how much you use it, and try to judge how much you'll miss it. If you don't, then subscribe. Um, just quickly, I did say that there are alternatives. I think the main ones are Busy Cal on Mac and iOS and Busy Contacts, which is only on the Mac. These two are a very powerful pair of Calendar and Contacts apps and have the most amazingly long history on the Mac. I mean, I used to rely on their ancestors, um, now up to date and now contact, way back in the 1990s. I don't think they're now as good at the natural language passing. I think Fantastical also, well, no, I know Fantastical is a much better drop down menu option on the Mac. Actually, I realize I've been showing you the full Fantastical for Mac app. I mean, chiefly for clarity, it's bigger, you could see more. I, sp I spend more time in its little drop down menu. BusyCal has a drop down menu, but it keeps most of its power for the main app. Nonetheless, have a look at BusyMac.com, where BusyCal and Busy Contacts are a one time purchase on the Mac for $50 each, or about $80 for both. BusyCal and Busy Contacts are also available in the Setup for Mac subscription, uh, the service where you pay $10 per month to get, well, those two and a couple of hundred other Mac apps. I like setup and I like the people there. Uh, I should say, actually, I like them so much. I should say that back when 58 Keys reached 500 subscribers, setup provided us with a couple of annual licenses uh, to give out. So, actually, their reward for being that nice was that I have never now done a 58 Keys about setup. We're heading to 1500 subscribers at the moment. I think that's enough distance from the old offer, don't you? I'll make sure we talk about setup fully at, at some point, which is what 58 Keys is meant to do. It's what it's meant to be about. It is officially for writers like you and me who use and write on Macs and iPhones and iPads. It is secretly for you and me to put off doing any actual writing. And it also lets me enthuse at you about apps I love. Thank you for that. Uh, apps included, very much including Fantastical and Card Hub. I am actually already getting comments about other apps that people love. Would you tell me about yours in the comments below? I think, it, was it you who told me about Hook for Mac? That's another story. Thank you for watching this edition of 58 Caves. Take care of yourself, eh? And I'll see you soon.